Clarence Mingo. I'm Clarence Mingo, auditor for Franklin County, and it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, every generation has its heroes, and those heroes are something to all of us. Uh, perhaps a brother or a sister, a parent, or perhaps just a friend. Uh, the individual who I'm charged with introducing is all of those things uh, to many people but he, for purposes of today, is an opportunity for us. Uh, an opportunity to say thank you, if we have not done so lately, for his service and sacrifice. Uh, this individual is a former POW, a veteran of the Vietnam War, a great Ohioan, and an even greater American. Would you please help me welcome our good friend and a very special Ohioan, Colonel Tom Moe. so busy about the only time we see each other these days is if uh, events like this, but it's, it's great that we can do it. I'd like to start off first of all by thanking the VFW for allowing us to use the building today, the post commander and, and all the members. It's uh, very generous of you. I'm a life uh, member of the VFW myself, uh, Lancaster Post 1380, and uh, it's really great to visit one of our, our brother posts here. Thanks again for having us. And, and Mel, I, uh, I have to tell you, when I hear uh, God Bless America, I have to think back to an opportunity I had, a very rare one, I'd say, and impossible these days. I was at an event in Washington in 1973, and the singer was Irving Berlin. Now, I have to tell you, you sing a lot better than Mr. Berlin. <laughs> yes. What a song. Can you believe that? It still uh, catches my breath to think that I had the chance to hear the person who wrote that song actually singing. You know, he's resting in peace now. Well, we're here today to uh, honor and recognize and endorse a very, very special person, a person I like to consider a friend and his family as well, Senator Portman. We've gotten to know each other over the years, both uh, uh, at political events, but more important, in our various jobs, uh, either as a senator or when I was director of veteran services for Ohio, to do concrete work to help support our veterans in any way we could. So we have a letter of endorsement here from Ohio Veterans United, and I'll mention a couple of points from it, but the letter is lengthy because his support of veterans is lengthy, it's without end. Ohio Veterans United is comprised of veterans across the state of Ohio who are, frankly, politically active. Bipartisan, Republicans, Democrats, and maybe a few independents thrown in. And a few years ago, about eight years ago, we got first started in the presidential election cycle and stayed together after that and broadened our work because we were and are concerned about some of the people that end up getting elected. People vote based on whatever it might be they see on television or read the newspapers. And I don't know how deeply they look beyond the headlines. And so we said, we're going to be active in supporting candidates for office who are veterans or support veterans causes, an important element of our population, and I have to say, a decreasing proportion of our population, uh, which is so important that our veterans get the attention that they have earned and the support from our elected officials. So we want good ones. And Senator Portman is a good one. We've endorsed him in the past. I've done everything possible that I could in my limited way to help the senator. And that's because of what he has done and what he is working on. One concrete example is the Missing in America Act, a bill that he wrote, I think it came into law about four years ago. Something that affects our deceased veterans across the country, but we started right here in Ohio to identify remains that were stored on a shelf 
in a mortuary of veterans who had served honorably but had no family to bury them. And so with this bill, we were able to get the VA to recognize the states among the next of kin. And as such then, we could bury these individuals with honor. And we've had several very, very moving ceremonies just here in Ohio, particularly at the Dayton uh, VA National Cemetery. And I believe it was the second time, Senator, that we had one of these events that a family showed up of one of the deceased. They had read about the names of the newspaper that we were going to have the burial with full honors. And they said, oh, you know, uncle, cousin, so-and-so, he had disappeared, we, they didn't know. So they were actually there to receive the flag. What a great program that was, Senator. We are so grateful for that. And there's items in the works. I have to, it's called METS, and being an old fighter pilot, I can't remember the names of long things here. So medical evaluation parity for service members, we'll give a quiz on that afterwards. <laughs> a very, very important act that's being put together to evaluate service people when they enter the service, not just from a physical standpoint, we know all about that, but also from a psychological mental standpoint. Very, very important because we have folks that leave the service and they have mental issues, and how do we know when they started? So we have to assume that well, maybe it was because of their military service. And ironically, we have found through a number of studies that I've uh, seen from the National Guard and from the DOD that most of the service members who suffer serious mental problems have never been deployed. And so the issue mental disabilities of service men and women is, is complex and MEPS will help us form a database at the beginning, end of service, and during so we can better help our veterans. So we're very grateful for that work, Senator.